Okay, it's okay. But 
we also see the trend again, and you know, I'm, I'm going to do a study about the trend because I was going to have been in Thailand. <clears throat> the peer reference is still a single house, but the types of, of family are changing. They become more like become more like a, a family without kids. And then mixed generations, like you know, couple maybe with with relatives, like parents or grandma, <coughs> or the grandma and the nephew, you know, like you know, grandchildren are staying together, but then the father and mother is uh, working somewhere else. So the type the, the characters of the families are now changing. And then <coughs> um, and you also could see that you know recently the, the types of the, the area for living also be a bit like you know, you know like condominiums and you see now some of the centers where you call them living. So you see that the trends of living also getting a little bit smaller. So <coughs> And then this is like um, what we also see from the, the, the research is that the the house house and single house is now like growing on the, in the suburb area of Bangkok. And with this one, contrast to the center city, you see a lot of condominiums are, are growing up along the subways and, and sky trains, <coughs> and also shop house. This is, these two are increasing. And this one is decreasing. <clears throat> with these two, you you this, with these two, then you could see that you know because this morning I explained about the map, but you will see that the what's going on, what's going on in city is that people are like moving around every day. You know, in the morning when they live in the suburb, then they have to drive in inside the city, you know, and then in the evening they're driving back. To the suburb, so this causes a lot of like you know traffic, uh, traveling hours, and this kind of characters is defined as an urban sport development, and this idea would actually we kind of like follow the trends of the developments of the U.S. You, I mean, from my observation, you could see that we are in Thailand and kind of like developing kind of ten years after this. Because we are followed, you know, more of like everything that the US is doing, we are doing the same thing. So this thing has happened in, in other countries as well. But today in the US what they are doing is that they're trying to develop a mixed use development. You now starting, they're trying to bring people back in the city. <clears throat> and but we still like, you know, we are growing. So and then the, my subject, because of my subject is shop house. So I try to look at also like what's going on with the shop house. We still have a lot of shop house, but it's old because you know the earlier development of Bangkok is starting from this kind of typing of housing, not a single house. So we have a lot of this, but it's just like under now it's like kind of ignore and underdeveloped. And then not the new one is uh, increasing normally is the old one. And then, yeah, I kind of go to the conclusion that with this kind of trends, what's happened is that we are, the, even the policy of the Black House City development is also support the, the um, urban sport development. And because of this mono housing, you see, this kind of like a village or what is called gate community. I don't know whether you have heard about this word, gate community. If you have read some paper, you might have, have seen this word. Because they, they, they call it the lead because of if you if you have seen it, then you see that they have a very nice and trying gate approach into their into the project, right? That's why they call it like gate communities. And if you could see then they would have built a wall around the property to define you know, the property and then it's kind of like make itself separated from the communities around. So what we can do, I then <coughs> kind of looking at the, the characters
purpose of city is Bangkok itself, that we had this kind of you know varieties of food. That you know this is one, this one probably maybe the one that you know a lot of tourists or tourism is promoting. And then we have this kind of you know public space occupied by you know private business on the street. Even like you know, former prime minister thought that this is a charming of the city, but you know, on the opposite hand, some, on the opposite side, somebody said this is a mess, right? <clears throat> and also, we're trying to promote cultural and art and this kind of things. So with this kind of like combining like the, you know what we already have, what we have been, and what we are trying to do. So there's an idea that this thing could be combined and then become like an approach for city development and it's called city, creative city um, probably if you're from Korea you probably knew this one right this Korea I mean South Korea has used this one as a kind of main policy to develop the country right now um, yeah but of course we, we have studied this one for when was that taxi government was that about 15 years ago when we start to fight? <laughs> so that one when we started, <laughs> I, I couldn't remember. It's a long story, maybe one in ten years, I guess. Years, yeah. yeah, like you know, when the, yeah, when when um, Tatsi, you know, he was a prime minister, he 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 thought that you know we had to change the the economies of China and shifting from originally from agriculture, right? Then we shifted to industrialization. Now we need to find another approach. That's why he, he was he was he was thinking about this, and then that's why he starts to have a TCDC, Thailand Creative Design Center, TCDC. And then the other one, TK Park. These two are like a government owned, but again, they become like a bit of a semi public, uh, semi government and private company that want to have kind of promote information and education for the people. This one, this center is more like a designer and creative people. This one is for kids, kind of promoting, you know, education about learning and things like that. <coughs> What he did was trying to lay the basic foundations of how we're going to create creativity from the knowledge and supporting the designer to, to drive these economies. So with this one, um, I think later before the coup, who was that? Um uh, and then before Yinga. Okay, Abisi Besha Shiva like announcing that the policy from, from the outward to the future, we will drive it with this economy, creative economy. Okay, so that was uh, become the main policy. But again, we don't know yet about what's going to happen next. <laughs> Did the proof be running? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, so so with this kind of like you know observing and seeing things, and uh, we thought that this could be one of the driving things that you know the city itself have. Okay, so what is creativity? Um, to let you know that, that the core of the creative cities is not about the place, it's not about city itself, but it focuses mainly on the people who live in the city. Okay, all right, that's the main focus. We, the, the ideas of economy, uh, creative economy or the creative city was mainly to support people, okay? It's like, and they thought that the people, the human or the people itself as the one who are creating innovation and then driving the economy. So, if you know, I don't know whether you know Sean uh, Chow Van Lee, he's the one who defined this one, and then he said that it's a new method of strategic urban planning and it's about how people could think, plan, and act creatively in the city. But as you can see, actually the, the ideas of this are related to the urban planning 
all right? But they are focusing on people, right? Later on, because of the main focus is on the people, so Florida, Richard Florida has mentioned about this. Did he kind of like classify this group of people specifically? Normally, we, we maybe uh, divide it like a high class, middle class, and you know. But this one, he specifically like defined this group as a new human capital with the economic driving force of the, of the cities. They are classified to two main creative groups, super creative core and then creative professional. Who are they? Who are these two? In general, it means anyone who has skills and do something. In general. So it includes even the labor people, if they have some skill and then they are producing some things, you know, it's, you know like uh, creating something, they could also define on this one. Right? It could be us, like architects, designer, and you know, graphic design, it could be engineer, doctor. So this guy are defined as a super. I mean, defined as a professionals. But with this one, it could be uh, even businessmen who may be creating a system, right? That could be like driving economy in, in the companies. So it doesn't mean like specifically to the designer only, but anyone in, in, in general who has skills and want to do something. So when we look at the city. <coughs> We would like to. So the idea is of you know what what uh, Randy say was that we are looking at strategy of urban development to bring people or to 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 observe people how they act things and do things in the city. So in terms of architects, in terms of architecture, what we did is that then we're looking at the cities, development of the cities, and how we could supporting this group of people. That they would like be here working in the cities, bring them and tapping them into the cities. And we believe that one these two with uh, one this group of people they meet, you know, with some skilled people, with some idea people, they came together, they would invent something new out of it. So that one, you know, that was the, the, the main kind of like uh, aim that we would like to do. <clears throat> And then what he would also mention is that this group of people, they are, they are now different from normal people, like the working system that we are doing, because they are more like flexible <coughs> working hours, and also they, they want to work like on a day, you know, collaboratively working together, not like class or high rank, things like that. So if we would like to bring it here in the cities, so we, what we are as an architect or planner would do, then we would like to do cities that you know, encourage this group of people to meet and then they have a you know, working and dialogue and then bring something out of themselves. So this is like what we are kind of like defining the city that would be attracting them to be in the cities. First, the city has to be inspired. So I don't know what to say, inspired, but you know, the city that you know when you leave, maybe you enjoy. I don't know from your city is you know you may feel that your own city has some kind of inspiration. I think even the Bangkok city itself also has some some interesting inspiration. But most of the time, because we are local, we we, we kind of we just like get used to all these things. But if we talk to you know foreigner, maybe we could find it all. Oh, this is like very unique, and you know. Not, no one else or nowhere else would be like us. And then another one is also interesting is that they have to be cultural interactive. What I felt about Bangkok itself, because I, I think that Thailand is somehow because we are our history has been uh, developed with the diversity of the ethnic group. You know, we have earlier of the city development, we you know the the original the original location of the the city start from uh like King Pate Grand Grand Palace, right? Actually, the 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 local people who living there are Chinese, and then like um, there's are some of the Yuanese, mean like you know 
the Vietnam, from Vietnam, but they are ethnic group. So we have to move them away and then took that place. So the Chinese people then, when they, then they have to move, then the king gave the land, the land area, for them to start a community. And the Yuan people from Vietnamese, they are going to the north, where now to become the Montgomery area. See? But the, 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 uh, the nation itself actually starting with, you know, with different ethnic groups. So I think what we have, you know, as a Thailand, that we already have this kind of cultural diversity within the, within the country itself. <clears throat> so that would be like, you know, like kind of like our. Uh, natural resource, you would say, you know, we already have this one. <clears throat> and then we also have to create a new experience, you know, place. So with this one, we could think about like a lot of things like, you know, if we thought about like modern approach, maybe like we create park, you know, um, museum, and things like that. But of course, if we look at the history or, you know, historical aspect, we could, we have a lot of very interesting architecture, or uh, temples that we could you know we could do in research and and these people they could get inspired from the original of the you know culture <coughs> of the area and then with this one what we what we have to have in order to bring these people I mean according to the theory anyway this is this is what we would like to do first the place itself has to be a quality, the quality of place has to be able to like support the ladies of this group of people. And then second, there has to be density. Of course, high density means you get a chance to meet more people. And then there has to be vulnerabilities. <clears throat> this is then they could get experience, you know, when they're living or you know, experience the cities. And this uh, what I just mentioned this morning is that if you compare the city that you see the car and then the city that you know, people could enjoy walking, the experience that they get are totally different. And then the next one is open, uh, open minds. <clears throat> Again, like if we, we look at what I just mentioned, that we already been like uh, cultural diversity. I feel that local people as Thai people will easily to adapt to new things. So that also will become up, uh, one of the key that I think that we already have as a, you know, as a nation itself. And then the last part is diversity. So this, um, this one and this one is something that we could create, right, as an architect. We design the place you know, with you know, high quality of living, we could design a place that could be you know, walkable, enjoyable. But with this three, density, open-minded, and then diversity, the this is this is something that we, it's not easy to make. Somehow it's maybe, it's, you know, it's come along with the history or culture of itself. So what I, I see is that we, as a, as a Thai people and a Thai community, I think we, we are lucky that we already have this kind of thing as our <coughs> background. So, <coughs> so with this character, we combine this one as to be saying that, you know, if we would like, if we would call a, a, com a creative city or a creative communities, he defined that they have to have key T uh, three key components. First, technologies, talent, and tolerance. First one, technology means what? Mean <coughs> the place in itself somehow had to have a sort of knowledge, a sort of resource that you know people could could be learned and invent something. And we are now here in this area, Kongsan area. So we, we have thought that, you know, as we are the university, we could become one of the key to play in this aspect, within this Kongsan area. Secondly, we need to have talent. Talent support is mean this group of people. And then the last one is tolerance. 
Solar has been, if we try to stop uh, saying the open way, uh, it is the way we, we mean is mean like the openness of the place, <coughs> meaning the people that we kind of like open enough to welcome, you know, a new culture or the new ideas. So that means the development of the place have to like mixing with all these people that are open-minded. So with this one, what I'm looking here <coughs> is that how this uh, how the architecture or the urban plan could be take part to be to like encourage the creative cities. Okay. Of course, we we may do something about this, but of course, this is like we we have to use a lot of knowledge, you know, in a very aspect. And it's of course we are looking for them, or we would like to invite them. We could not just create them, right? <clears throat> but this one, then what I think is that since this is more like a place that we need to to create um, a society where they have to have open mind people. So I think as in terms of architecture or the planning, the approach of you know all the policies or the ideas of mixed use of place and building could become one of the key. If we would like to create creative cities, we may have to focus on this kind of approach. We have to create the place itself become mixed use, or the building itself that could be mixed use. Because of if we open this policy for varieties of use and activities, then we could have a chance that we could invite all these people to join in this place. We are not risking, we are not um, limited the activity to take place in this one. We are open for them. So then, then we give a chance for them to, to explore the place as well. And then in terms of architecture, so what I think is that since we have to develop this policy, then now my focusing would be, uh, my focus on my study would be like how to improve the building to be flexible. Right? And then I jump to the conclusion of myself that this kind of place, this kind of architecture, this kind of build, flexible buildings, it actually occurred or already happened in the chop house. I, I think that all, all Thai students probably knew this very well about the shop house. And I don't know, maybe Korea should be, I went to, I went to um, Seoul before, so I knew that they have some kind of building that's a mixed use in, di in different like, levels, in different floor, right? Yes, but I don't know exactly. You don't know about, exactly about the yes. word shop house, right? Yes. And how about you? Do you know the word shop house? Uh, I do not know, actually. Okay. <laughs> so so it's it's up. Yeah, 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 that's fine. This is like, um, actually these types of, of buildings, it's, it's, um, it's happened, you know, a lot in, in, in Asia countries, like China, Korea, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Singapore, and even Thailand, even India, you know what I mean? So you will see a lot of this one. <coughs> um, let me... Then briefly, okay, let me conclude this one. This is what I'm, this is my thesis though, actually. This is like what I'm kind of to define my subject of studies into how we could use this one to encourage the creative cities, okay? Let me just speak a, a brief explanation about shop house. You probably have seen this type of thing, right? This is called shop house. This kind of buildings. Actually, if you just walk on the street, you probably see the towel. With, with store. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, yeah. It, there will be like a, a row of, of units, you know, like uh, eight or ten units. And then like a row house. But I think in America or in Europeans, country, what they define them, they would call them as a row house. But row house for them are meaning for residential use. Okay? So why we call it shop house? Because there's a mixed use of buildings. 
in Thailand or in, in Asian countries, this Thai people think they're used for commercial and non residential mixed together. There's not either of them, but they only they both mix both. So the definition, when you call it, then will be different than low house. Um, this is according to the regulation, Thai regulation. They say it's a low of units, more than two units, and in between these units has a fire resistant wall. And that's it. This is how they describe this type of building. So what I, what I see is that, wow, they didn't mention anything about what kind of activity could take place or function for itself. Basically, they just describe correct, I mean, the physical character and the safety firewall, and that's it. That's it. Nothing else. So for that study, then I see that, well, how we would define them? So I, I did study with the, um, um, with the literature review to see, you know, whoever has studied this and how they define them. So they define them as a two-story two, two or more in height and just row of units. And the multi-use space on different levels. This is from Professor Adiman from Jurong from the 1981. And then again, this is another study from, from Dr. Virasajukun. I think he become professor right now. This is like, according to his study from Michigan when he was a, a, a doctor's student. He defined them as a, you know, according to use and income generated from the use. It could be used for commercial, a residential, commercial, or both. And then he also mentioned about the tendency and these conditions. Because if you think about a commercial aspect, <clears throat> all the floor here that you see here could be rent out separately. Right? So basically what, what happened is that you could own buildings, but you may be leased the properties. This is in Thai we call same same building, you know, like it's also Chinese, I don't know what's the original meaning for, but like they would lease they the property and belong somewhere else, maybe uh, somebody else, and then there's maybe a like, developer would like to, to build the building in this area. So they lay the land and build the buildings. And then later they lease out for this for 30 years. So they get income from this development. And that's what you know, because of the buildings are very simple built and cheap one. So basically, this is how they make a uh, make a money. And second one, they, you could be like both on the land and properties. I mean, building and properties. And then you could do long term lease, normally thirty years. Short term, just depend on what you know the contracts. And then you could even like do the sublease. Sublease being, um, let's say you may be the owner, and I I lease the the whole unit, right? And then you may be interested to rent the, the ground floor to do some business. So I let, I let you meet. So that means he's sub me. Okay? So there's a many kind of like condition to know for this kind of things. <clears throat> and with that then I dig up like you know in details about the regulation of of uh, defining by the Thai Thai regulations to explain the characters of the physical characters of the shop house. And then, you know, kind of explaining, you know, what the dimension they allow and not allow. So, uh, I think I, I would like to start it here, otherwise it's going to be like more details about my study. Because, <clears throat> so, what I would like to say is that my study is on shop house, and the shop house that I'm looking at is that how I would develop this one in order to create or support or encourage the city to become like creative cities. And with the themes that I did study, it will kind of somehow that now, right now, KMGTT addressing these buildings to support this area and to create innovation district in the Kongsan area. So that's why it become a theme for our workshop. Okay? And then the workshop that we are going to have is in 21st October. 21st up to 29 October. The, there will be 
a student from KIT. Mostly they are architect students. Um, I heard that they will come like six, six students for master students. So they will come and join us and do some, some study here in our, in our area. And then later, this is kind of like, you know, uh, exchanging thing. So in February, we will go to Kyoto and do the same workshop over there. So it is like a no workshop. Okay? Uh, but we don't know yet about the time, but normally they start in, in early February. It's very cold there. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's about the, 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 the ideas of creativity and then my study of topics and then the workshop. And now what we are going to do is
So you see that the back is kind of like pointing toward the back. And this is how they convert into a living space. What I imagine is that they know about you know, how fancy this building is. Look at only the space, the quality of lightings. We could even like, you know, use cheaper materials and we could plant this kind of tree, right? Maybe we don't need to have this amount of glass. But within a very simple and common chop house, we could be converted into a very pleasant place to live. And that's why I think, you know, it kind of let me think about like why we, you know, as an architect, we could do this one and encourage people to have a very better, I mean, better quality of living, right, which is a limited budget. And this is the top, I mean, the terrace on the top. This they say as a barbecue place <laughs> for three families to enjoy the dining. I mean, quality, if you look at the qualities of the space, ignore about the materials. I mean, I, could, I mean, anyone could do it, right? I mean, just build a higher wall and you know, with the bigger windows, but you could do it with other materials. And that's the drawings of the section. Again, I think uh, I showed you this one better. See the ground floor? You know, have become like a common place for all families. They even add one elevator at the back, and then the service stay will be at the back too. And this is one unit family. This is another family here, and another family here. See, and then the central core, which is the garden in the middle, will share between three units. I mean, three families. And then the lower part. One unit on the on the on the left, I guess, become a parking space. Okay, this is another one. This is the um, hostel designed by my senior. He's the first batch and educated, uh, graduated from this KMUTT. He's on. He's also opened his own office, and he this project he he. Um, Working with his brother, investing on like renovating these two units of chop house. But again, like I said, you know, the different layers, the different floor could be operated differently. So, on the ground floor, it still remain as an existing shops. But then on the second floor, after the third floor, he rent this place and convert it to the hostel. And this one, I got it from the website called Art Daily. It's been like an international application on the website. This is the original of the units. You know, these two units. Uh, I think it's these two units. It's next to the sky trains. When you get off this stair and you turn left, you see the door. It's very, very convenient. <laughs> and the existing was, when he told me the story, it's quite surprising me a bit because he told me about like a slum. Because, you know, the junior was divided into a small room, like eight rooms, eight rooms of floor. It's very dense, like you have only like tiny room. And this this boy is no window, so it's only a boy. And then um, who living here are the uh, uh, mates who are working in the hospital. So they may probably they come from you know, other provinces and trying to find cheap planes and working. So so then when he rent the place and you know, he knew all these uh, terrible places to stay in. Um, so he converted into a, a, a hostel and this is what it looked like when they related to uh, star floor and then the the platform of the BTS. It's next to what is the station? It's one by. I don't know whether you know, you know when you go to the JJ Market, this is the station before BT before Washing. Oh. And if you get out, you will see, actually, if you get out of the platform, you will see his terrace. <laughs> Very interesting. I remember the first time I went, you know, he was already there, you know, 
our his friends and my friends of having dinner here. I was like, hey guys, I'm here. Like, okay, let's go. I, I you know, for from my experience was that <clears throat> how often did you could have a space or a terrace that lived to the beach is like this. Not very often and not I think you know compared to all the stations we have. Normally it become a high rise, you know, but this area still because it has a chop house. So this is private, this is public, right? And this is not on the ground floor, this is on the top floor, but you still have a kind of like relationship between the public and private between your own youth. That's why I'm like, wow, this is not very often we will find such space, you know, in a city like this, you have this kind of, you know, relationship. And then when the car floor came, then you see all these motorcycle parking because they have to, you know, get all people and go to the sky trains. And this is the facade. And then when you turn in there, you see the light here, this is the original existing shop that still remain there on the ground floor, and then you get in there go up to the second floor. And all this all this facade that you see here, he took the um, the window and door from the existing buildings and replacing them and then put them into graphics and create a facade. And this is the interior right now. There's a section. So you see, this is a gate. Get in and then go up. This, you know, this is the only like a, a, a narrow passage. Go to the back, go to the stairs. That's what become the, the hostel rooms and then the roof garden. And you see the relationship between your your rooftop and then sky train. And this is the facade. And you see, this is his sketch about me, how he did the pattern and then you know, put those on there. Oh, another thing very interesting what he, he did was that this fabric, this roof fabric, is the, um, what's it called, Pakong, I don't know what's it called, what is it? Thai, Thai, Thai it's like a towel that you, you know, wrap yourself, <laughs> but it's in, but it's like Thai local people would use it very often. Do you know how about it? Where you go? It's like a sorrow. It's like a sorrow. It's like a sorrow. It's like a sorrow. It's like the plate or pattern. Yes. I think, I don't know where he bought it. I would imagine he probably bought it from JJ Market. <laughs> But it's very nice, you know, it's like, wow, you know, I wouldn't imagine that this kind of very common use, you know, for our daily life would become something that's very attractive for the foreigners. It's like, oh, what is this? You know, and then he uses it as a, a roof. I mean, you know, a fabric roof. Okay. Um, last one, this is a bit of more modern, modern design, this unit in Tom Law. He, he uses, a, this is like a mixed use building as well. Ground floor, uh, the uh, ground floor is the kitchen. And then, you know, there has a stair in front, so you could go up to the second floor, which uh, is the restroom. And then when you go up to the third floor, they become a shoe shop. Then the stair goes up. This is the main the stair, you see the, 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 the uh, Let's go there and then on the third floor they become the shoe shops. And then that's the atmosphere of the restaurant. And of course if you look up, then you see the shoe shop on top. And that's a plan section. Very narrow unit. But again you see this part. This part, probably the existing condition, this is the existing building, and then they extended the back part to the to the to the back and then they have a kitchen here and then the restaurant there. And then they could have a um uh open service at the back. But you see how the chop house has become 
something that you know we, we could convert into different use and you know it's used for mixed use you know by common people but even an architect could also adapting and redesign and doing it itself become a very attractive and, and nice design space. Okay, um, another book that I I think if you would like to study a bit about the creativity, this is the, the book called The Rest of the Creative Class, written by um, Richard Florida. Actually, this is from the library here, <laughs> if you want to read. Um, I also have a, other copies of his and also other books if you would be interested. Um, So our building is somewhere around here. This one. Then uh, we'll go to Omega Station, cross the station and go to this street. Go up to
Well, then we have some local people that can show us. Whereas, oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> and then I think, I think you know, for, for our themes at a workshop, right, we might, the interesting pattern of this street, of this area, was that because they have the river running here, right? That's where we get, which connect to Sapan um, and then go inside the, uh, inside the city town. In the future, actually, they have already had some way. But somehow, I don't know, they come around this way, right? Mm -hmm. not, not at the main street, but they, they kind of run. Yeah. But in the future, the we would have, would have another, another subway. Uh, another subway along the street. And stop here somehow that will connect these two stations. Mm. Right. All right. Right. But funny enough, we have the SkyTrain there, but the next station will be a bit far further to this. They're not connect to BTS. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Super funny for me. Yes. But this area was now what I'm looking at is that. A big of my opportunities, you know, look at the best side, well, it's not connect, very well connection, uh, very well connected area, but if the people have to walk mm. from that subway, or even this subway, I don't know where it actually would be, go to BTS there, so this area will become mm. a commercial space, mm. for sure, mm. right? So now my students, my this is student fifth year, they are trying to explore the opportunity there in this spot. I, but I'm not going to walk you there, but I'll just mention that you know there are some kind of like a future development that will change this, this those yeah, areas. Right. right. <laughs> so then when you before we go there, we know a bit of a picture of what is going on in the what will we happen in the future. This area. You know, this is going to be a big development from Icon Sia. Mm -hmm. It will become, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it's like a mixed, 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 yeah, mixed mix. use development. They become a, a high rise for condominiums, a museum, shopping center, and you know, like a complex, everything that we haven't seen in Bangkok before. So this will become like a big development that's now going on here mm -hmm. on this part. Um, we have, if you can explore a bit further, underneath this bridge, there's a park. Yes. That a lot of people going there for jumping and, and you know, uh, weightlifting, training, something like that. So around here, and I don't know, here. Okay, then we can turn it off soon. So this another this will be a park for the people around here. And that's a commercial big one, I would say, a very big one. And there will be fast structure coming on the edge of this corner. And this area, this area, and also two or two DNS area, these areas are they has a very unique culture, like very low, I mean, old communities that it used to be work, like producing products to Yawalak area on the opposite side of the river. So this would be another aspect that we could explore in terms of local communities. Like Yes, yes. Yeah. You see that the community of a goldsmith. Uh-huh, yes. yes. So you see that, you know, we have a very high potential of cultural aspect new infrastructure, new development, park. Mm -hmm. And we piers, have, crossing piers are uh, inside the side one. Yeah, the, the, yeah this uh, is a toy, this is not, yeah, yeah. Um, where? Yeah, at the park. Well, yeah, the yeah park. this is a toy, right? Yeah. So then we'll go to a new CBD, uh, CBD subsidy, Satorn sub Street. Mm -hmm. And this area, this is called Bang Lang. Mm -hmm. This is also a local Chinese communities. And the pier around on this side, though, here around this side used to be a dock for our goods in the, in the past. Mm -hmm. So there has a lot of um, like a church or Muslim community living around here. Mm -hmm. So you see that there are a lot of dynamics going on in this area. And then we'll go for like you know 
searching for something interesting that they have decided. Okay, so that's it. Oh, I forgot this one. You see this line? This line, this street? They are planning to have a bridge cross over the, the river. Uh -huh. And this bridge will end it there, like somehow here, and then come back to this one. But it's not that there is a bridge will cross up to this and then turn back to go with that. And this one will cross the bridge, it's called Chinatown. Yes. Oh. So there's another, another development that's coming. Is that part of that? So you see, there's a lot of things that you know are going to happen around this area. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any questions? Some. Uh, Hopefully, we could.